Hello there everyone and welcome back to Empire Total War with a Russo-Turkish War Battle Series using the Russo-Turkish War Mod. Last time around we did the Siege of Kars over on the Eastern Front in the Caucasus. Today we are going back to Shipka Pass for the fourth and final battle which is also going to mark the end of this series because this is the final major battle before the war ends. So, full context, in 1877, in December, the Siege of Pleven ends in a Russian victory, freeing up a lot of Russian and coalition troops, which meant that they could again go on the offensive. So they're going to push down from Shipka Pass, while one force were going to move over to the west and come from the south to cut off the Ottoman force building, making the front line towards Shipka Pass. And that's what we're going to do today, is we're going to move down from the pass down to meet the uh, Ottomans down below. So we're going to do a different map and because people have been asking for it, I am today going to play as the Ottomans and my opponent is going to play as the Russians, and we'll see how that goes. With that said, let's go ahead and jump in to the battle, shall we? And so here we are for the actual battle. Let's go over what troops I have brought to the battlefield. Also, I am going to flash these pictures of the troop selection, so you'll see that more easily for both sides. Probably should have used that for really all of these kinds of videos to easily show what kind of troops are taking part in the battles. Let's go over my troop selection. So in the front here, it's two light infantry, and then there's two units of Bazi Bazook. That's followed up by eight units of line infantry, wherein which three are Egyptian, but there's no real difference in terms of stats in between Egyptian line infantry and the normal line infantry. That is then backed up by the general, and then we've got one unit of howitzer in the back. Now the big mistake in my army selection I made was really the cavalry. I selected the wrong units, so I got these smaller 80 men units, um, which I thought were the correct one, but I guess I wasn't paying attention. However, our cavalry isn't really going to be the game changer in this, because uh, infantry can so easily just cut cavalry down if you get if you prepare it right. So it's I. If I had picked the right two cavalry units, it would have added 160 cavalry soldiers to my army, but it wouldn't have made a big difference. There's a lot of other stuff that would have made bigger difference in my army setup. So initially here we can see that I placed my artillery pretty far back. That's because the artillery, of course, has a dead zone in front of it where it cannot fire, and I miss... Um, since the Russians are outnumbering me, and per the historical context, they are the ones attacking, I'm expecting to fall back, and I want to keep the enemy within range of fire then as they approach down the hill for as long as possible. The mistake I made here was that um, I didn't really factor in that he was going to place his all the way up here. And so he's able to bombard me off the start while I am not able to use the artillery. And the, as we've seen in previous battles, artillery is super deadly. So that's a big mistake I make. The second one is the fact that I'm leading with the light infantry. Normally, this is not a big mistake because uh, as you play Napoleon in Empire, you usually screen your army with light infantry. However, light infantry is super crucial in this mod just because they're so accurate. I think they've got something like 17 accuracy. Like, it's insane the amount of damage they can put down um, and troops they can kill. So I should have probably sent some other units forward instead to take the artillery, the brunt of the artillery. And that's going to cost me quite a bit, losing the light infantry. However, my opponent won't be able to use his light infantry very effective either. But unfortunately, mine are going to get crushed by artillery. I'm moving them quickly up here to set them up in the forest. To try and avoid as many kills as possible. As we are approaching here. 
Uh, main line marching up in two lines, where we got five units in the front, three units in the back, and then the Buzzy Bazook are kind of hiding here uh, on the sides, ready to catch cavalry off guard. At the same time, the Russians are advancing. So, in the Russian army, we have a lot more cavalry. So, on this side, we've got Don Cossacks, two units, the General. In the back is reserve, we got guard and two units of line infantry. Has actually got two units of guard and two units of grenadiers, uh, backed up by I think it's four line, three Cossacks. We've got the, his lights, his rifles, which are now coming under fire by my artillery. And then he's got on this side, he's got. Cavalry and Lancers moving up, and you can see the size of the Russian units. However, as I said, they're not really the big game changers. Usually it's the artillery and the, the infantry, and especially of the infantry, the light infantry. In this case, my light infantry in this unit has suffered heavily, and it's only 36 men left. And the other one is just now starting to get hit and uh, they've lost about a hundred men at the same time I am bombarding his light infantry and they're not really within range of each other so no shots have been exchanged as of yet it's mostly just um, uh, units getting killed by uh, artillery so I'm pushing forward my light infantry my line infantry and it's actually pushing his light infantry back um, I probably shouldn't have done this. Uh, I probably should have. I should have pulled back a lot earlier. Uh, although, kind of a steady, slow pullback. What I'm going to do is um, kind of uh, not really panic, but I'm gonna just go. Oh shit! This is definitely not working, and just pull everyone back. So now his light infantry or the rifles have opened fire on my rifles. However, mine are in the forest, so in a straight-up fight here, they should be able to hold out quite a bit. Now, they're suffering heavy casualties from the artillery, and now there's only 21 left. Um, so, now there's only about 16 left. I'm pushing forward my infantry to start shooting at these, but soon here I'm going to... I was moving up my cavalry as well to possibly push through and try to find a way to get to his artillery but there was no way I'm gonna be able to do that and soon here is where I decide that you know what my position is unattainable I cannot hold it there's loads of Russians coming in I should say here the battle lagged really badly I think we're actually pulling back yeah I'm pulling back my troops right now um, it lagged really badly and so my enemy isn't really able to um, uh, exploit the fact that I'm pulling Mac like this. And he's been rather cautious in moving forward with his troops, even though he's devastated my most, um, my most powerful units, the light infantry. Um, there's one guy left here and there's 19 over here. Uh, he still has 145. These also outrange the line infantry, I believe, but just a little bit, so they'll get the first shot off. So not only are they much more accurate, but they have longer range. Uh, however, these are mostly going to be cut down by the artillery. And now, as I'm pulling back with all my troops, this unit will suffer heavily uh, because of the artillery as we're pulling back. Especially since I kind of just rushed pull everyone back. And they became these squares, um, which I lost a lot of units. We can see here some logs have exploded up in, in bits. Uh, these otherwise uh, obstacle, which you can actually place units sort of behind. Not that they, it, it's nearly enough to cover an entire unit, but it, they will stop a little bit of bullets. Um, so lots of units being lost there. We have a single guy. Still holding on, uh, for yeah, not any longer though. He got, he just got shot down, and then I have uh, 19 over here. As the Cossacks were moving forward here, 
in between the houses. They were kind of pushed together. So I relocated my artillery to fire at them. So they've lost quite a few soldiers in their units as well. So this one has lost about half. Um, where this one isn't really there yet. But um, it's getting there. Now it's lost about half. So a lot of Cossacks got blown up here. So it's going to change now as I've pulled back away from his artillery range and now he's gonna have to advance into my um, artillery got there goes my last light infantry and he's still 135 over here and I don't know where the other unit went but he has another unit as well of light infantry so in this point it's looking rather bleak, and I also realize with all the cavalry that's coming in um, that it's not looking good. I've made my defensive position as follows. I've put three units of light and infantry on the sides, two in the center, and three on this side. And I'm keeping the Buzzy Bazooks um, as they were originally stationed, so I haven't moved them. And since they are hidden, I'm hoping to still catch his cavalry as they move forward and uh, be able to shoot them down. We've got artillery barrage now bombarding his troops as they're pulling forward. I'm aiming for important units like guards or if I can see units um, moving together uh, to create a bigger blob that I can fire on. I probably should have uh, maybe fired on cavalry. Cavalry charges are going to come in and disrupt me a bit. So I might have be worked better if I broke them down because they kind of break my morale and break up my formations where in which in the uh, firefight I'm actually going to do quite well especially since his rifle aren't going to be very effective. I sh here also I should have targeted his artillery sooner than I did. He's moved them up and you can see half the units actually within the uh, trees. So that's not very... I mean, it's going to cover the artillery, but them firing out of the forest isn't going to do much for their... Ac not really accuracy, but a lot of shots are going to hit right in front in the trees. But I'm more concerned about the very um, deadly rifles. So them I'm focusing on. And as I said as well, um, the battle was super laggy for some reason. I think it was actually that there was a problem, sort of a general problem with the inter internet connection in Sweden at the time. So that's what caused the problem. And his troops are about to kind of fall into my buzzy bazook traps. So I think this is the first one um, that's going to move in. I had this on... I turned off the fire at will a um, setting on them hoping to trap the enemy here I kind of should have probably pulled a little bit back so that I could fire on the enemy as they came out of the forest rather than firing at uh, while they're in the forest as that will uh, take some of the shots so now there's counter battery fire where the artillery is shooting back and forth at each other we've lost one piece while I don't think I've inflicted such damage on the enemy, I believe I was able to fire first on them. But I have only achieved about five. So maybe there was an advantage to them actually placing the artillery like that in the forest. Because I've lost a lot. Also, he starts to fire on my cavalry. My cavalry is already kind of broken down. So now they're even more broken down. Oh yeah, he's, he's actually moving in his troops here first. So the Bazi Bazook are able to shoot down quite a bit of the Cossacks that are left. And now my cavalry, as they're being bombarded by artillery, there's no point in keeping them. So I'm just rushing them forward. Going to upset the Cossacks as they move forward here. And uh, kind of just break them up as uh, my Bazi Bazook are inflicting damage on them. So not a lot of Bazi Bazooks being killed so far, about 12. And they have inflicted quite a bit of damage on the enemy moving forward. Uh, on this side, I decided to pull back the Buzzy Bazooks because the cavalry was coming in too close. And they were discovered. 
They can't form square, so uh, they would have been destroyed out there. He focuses on my general, so I'm forced to pull him back. So my cavalry is certainly not doing well. Uh, now though, they're starting to push down more fire from the hill and uh, I'm forced to retreat with the Bazi Bazooks and the remainder of the cavalry, one unit in each here, but we did destroy the little Cossack unit and I did inflict quite a bit of damage on the line infantry and we temporarily halted them over here as we are able to move back and regroup. And let's see. Over on this side, I'm making sure that I kind of plug the gaps, putting the Buzzy Bazook on the side. We've got units now moving up in the open, so we got Grenadiers moving up. And this is the unit that was hit hard as I was retreating. So he's he's seen a weak point here in the line where he can kind of split. And then he can follow up with cavalry and kind of split my army here. So um, that's something to worry about. I can't. Re it was a while that I r recorded this, or not recorded this, but played this. So I don't think he. I'm. I remember he pushing forward here, or as he. No, we'll we'll see. We'll see. He was advan. He was sending up troops and advancing. We will. We'll get to that later. For now, there's just some uh, uh, artillery barrage and units moving around, kind of um, just figuring out each other. Um, right now, this is really going in my favor, because um, uh, as long as I can inflict damage on his troops with my artillery, the better. Um, so he's advancing now, over here, he's advancing troops over here. We've got some of the rifles moving up in the center, but I am targeting them with my artillery. I'm going to blow them up. They're not going to sit kind of out of range of my line infantry and keep killing me so I want to hit them and destroy them same time we've lost another cannon and the crew is down to 45 men for my artillery uh, I don't think we've got uh, we've actually done similar on their battery at this point more of a general advance we can see the rifles again there's very few of them here is what I was talking about I'm gonna make a counter push here by some units moving forward. As we can see, as they're pulling forward, they're coming in at an angle, and a bad angle at that. So they won't be able to uh, um, respond as I'm pushing forward my unit. Plus, of course, with all the lag and stuff. So I'm able to push forward, get a shot off, and then retreat before the uh, grenadiers are able to fire back, I believe. Um, so, not a lot of kills, but it, it gave me that little small kind of morale victory and kept kept him on his toes, like he's not able to move up just as he wants. Um, now the units are opening fire over here. The rifles have moved, I think, quite too far ahead. Also a problem here, most of the, his cavalry attacks are not going to go in through the center, they're going to go in on the sides. So I think these um, cavalry obstacles I've set up is more actually stopping my bullets from uh, hitting the enemy rather than uh, rather than stopping cavalry attacks. It probably is stopping direct attacks towards my cannons, which is okay, I guess. Um, now it's kind of an all-out fight here. Ah, yes, the cavalry charge is going in. So it ca caught these buzzy bazooks in the open and then pushing forward with infantry and the cavalry so there's quite a dire situation going on on this side however I am able to form square and here comes his general supporting the cavalry charge the square is open on this side but squares are uh, very strong not as strong as in Napoleon but they are strong I'm pushing up my general to support her pushing back. The Buzzy Bazook got slaughtered in that. Uh, he kind of caught me off guard by pushing over here while the real attack was really coming over here. Beating back the Russians here though. So my uh, my troops are holding steady and they're holding steady here as well with this unit in reserve just to cover for cavalry. 
So it's going quite well. My artillery is blasting his troops. At the same time, uh, the point which I thought was kind of weak over here has actually held. And the grenadiers and the guards haven't been able to really uh, push us out. And the cavalry charge didn't really work. So we've held the line, but there's another charge coming, as we can see. I'm moving my general away, because I don't want him to die. But you can see there's another great ch cavalry charge coming in. And uh, holding the line, killing as many of these cavalry guys as possible. But unfortunately, no square was formed. Very deadly to form square when there's infantry aiming at you. His general is now riding to attack the square. My general is rushing back to kind of stem the tide here. His cavalry is pushing through to get my general. And unfortunately he is going to die here. But it is going to stem the tide. You can see the Cossacks there actually retreated. So one unit was forced away. And now it's only his general which is now stuck in between all of my units we're not able to uh, um, to kill him I am gonna try and pursue him here and I was hoping to set up my units so we could shoot his general down and give him really that kind of really hit on the morale at the same time I have been doing well on this side you can see there's a lot of casualties inflicted on the Russians here goes my general uh, so we're still holding here. I think, I'm not entirely sure if my general was shot or if he was killed in the actual fight here with the enemy general. Since he's dead, I'm just going to push him in and try to cover my retreat of the troops. We have a small unit of two Ottomans holding back over here. Uh, the enemy charged my cannons. I'm counter charging with line infantry and we actually broke the Cossack unit attacking. Unfortunately though, um, the cannon unit had lost too many men and they're not going to be able to stand. This one is making a last ditch uh, defense, the Buzzy Bazooks holding as I'm trying to pull back and um, there's only a few units left. However, we've inflicted heavy casualties on the, co on the uh, Russians as well. But at this point I'm pushed up against the red line. So we're going to make lines along here and then hope to uh, shoot down as many of the enemy as possible. This unit was trying to assassinate the enemy general. As we see there's only 18 men left in his bodyguard. Uh, we were trying to go after shoot him down. Didn't succeed. At the same time we've got massive cavalry charges going in. General loss. Uh, my general is lost and I don't have that much to put up against them. The square is broken just by the pressure and the amount of troops. Um, we've got square here, line, and then we're going to try and shore up the defenses over here. I'm sending another unit out to try and shoot down the enemy general while some of my, my, my brave Ottoman soldiers hold on here. However, as we move forward, we of course get a flank fired from Grenadiers and other units. We are able to fire a little bit off to here. We shot down one guy, but um, it's not going to be enough. So at this point, I only have uh, four units left. So we've got the big in, uh, Egyptian line infantry over here. We've got one over here, and we've got the smaller Egyptian over here. And there's another cavalry charge coming in. I'm hoping to break them. We're just standing in line and shooting these guys down. As they're uh, not that many. Forming square hill, kind of last second. Artillery shots coming in. Kind of breaking up the entire thing. And unfortunately my biggest unit just broke. And it breaks the rest of the army. We've got one unit left. And it's now being attacked by Russian cavalry, cutting at them from all sides. And we are forced back. So with that, I lost the battle. And in terms of the mistakes that were made, it's, I think I could have done 
a lot better if I had the light infantry left. The fact that I didn't bring proper cavalry unit isn't so much of a thing as the light infantry. I think I could have achieved so much better with the light infantry. I also had a chance, I believe, for my artillery to bombard his artillery when it was moving up. And I could have probably destroyed a lot of it. And that could have helped me in the last part of the battle here. Of course, as we can see, I was outnumbered by about a thousand men. But I, uh, I definitely think I stood a chance given the casualty rates here are quite even. Um, the enemy actually lost more than me, but only marginally more than me in case this is what, 80, 79 men more. Um, so still able to perform really well even with the mistakes I made and were able to inflict just as much uh, casualties as I received. Unfortunately though we were broken and the road to Constantinople is open and the only thing we can hope for is for the uh, other European powers come in to restore the power balance and kind of save this crumbling empire from just I absolutely imploding at this point. Um, in terms of this, I mean, there's still, in terms of the kills and stuff, it doesn't really sit... Uh, we, well, we all know that the uh, the kills does not count for the right way for the artillery here. So, when I lost 3,700, but the enemy only killed 2,500, I doubt I was uh, that I killed a thousand of my own men in friendly fire. Given that there was no double, there was not really double lines and stuff like that, and same with here. So it's really the artillery which is undercounted in the amount of kills they made. If we go here, we can see that the artillery still got the most at 475, so they performed really well. Then I was surprised to find that it was one of the Buzzy Bazook units, the units that I've kind of spat at in previous battles, oh these worthless buzzy bazooks getting cut down left and right. Um, in this battle they performed really well and were able to get 414 kills. And that's due to their fire uh, rate, or their, not the fire rate, but their muskets or their, their rifles they're firing. And not like melee or running down units or anything. And they have, what, 30 accuracy compared to a normal unit that has 50? So they stood up against normal line infantry. And just by the way I was able to micromanage and use them, I was able to outperform a lot of line infantry. As we go down, it, for every Ottoman that fell, it kind of goes that one Russian fell, roughly, as we go down here. It gets a little bit worse as we get down. A lot of units suffered heavy casualty due to artillery. We have one unit here, suffered all casualties. Every single one died, with only 64 inflicted on the enemy. I imagine this one was hit heavily by artillery or it could have been that one on one unit on the flank that might have gotten hit by artillery also here really sad to read light infantry only 62 kills normally they absolutely slay so i definitely not were not able to utilize the light infantry in the way i should have uh the other bazi baruch this is the kind of thing you would expect for a bazi bazook basically everyone dead with only 50 kills. General's bodyguard. Um, 24 kills. I actually thought he would do more there. And then really disappointing here. Oh. Sh wow. Really disappointing with this light infantry. Given how good light infantry is. And only 3. So that. I mean that kind of really shows in statistics. How poorly I use the light infantry. That we were only able to get 65 kills with what is really a killer unit. And then also it compounds with my mistake of selecting the wrong cavalry units. Now they were hit by artillery. So even if I had other cavalry units. Probably wouldn't have gone too well. 
uh, doing the exact can't sign uh, the exact the same thing but yeah basically um, they didn't do anything in the battle really they just upset the Cossack unit for a little bit so it wasn't able to fire on the Buzzy Bazook uh, and I think that that Buzzy Bazook is the one that did so well the one that was stationed over here that started off right about here shooting down Cossacks and line infantry and then pulled back to stand uh, somewhere here and it was the last unit of this like first line defensive line I uh, took uh, it was the last to hold there as the other ones pulled back so it kind of really held the line um, so really interesting there to kind of basically a militia unit being able to hold so well but there we have it um, you guys wanted to see me fight with the Ottoman force and so for this last battle I did it didn't really go that well but we can definitely see that I uh, even though the um, odds were a little bit against me and even with the mistakes I made I still performed quite well and was able to inflict more casualties on the enemy however though there's still um, a lot more Russians left than there are Ottomans and as I said the road to Constantinople is open with that this kind of concludes the series because there's no other really important battles left uh, worth depicting so we'll be going over to something else. I've been looking at doing the Crimean War because that fits with the units and the time period of the Scramble for the Far East mod right now, what's available. So it's probably going to be something along the line of the Crimean War as the units are kind of set run around the 1850s for the, that campaign. With all of that said, uh, I'll say, as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.